Hey everyone, and welcome to the presentation. My name is Russ Stevens, and today I'm gonna to show you how to get more leads for your building company without filling up your database with time wasters. Because if you plan on growing your building company, or even if you just wanna avoid working for a salary and start making some real money from your business, then you need to know how to market a building company in a way that attracts the best clients rather than the, the price checkers and the tire kickers. But before we get started, I wanna make sure that you can hear me okay and you can see my screen. So please go ahead and type in the chat box and just let me know whereabouts in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or the US that you're tuning in from today. Thank you guys. Eric's telling me that I'm good. Thanks, Eric. Eric's down there in uh, in Texas. Greg, everything is good. Stephen, Zoe from Wellington. Roy in Auckland. Good to have you guys in from New Zealand. How's the how's the weather shaping up today? I'm uh, I'm sitting here on the Gold Coast in Australia. We got a, a beautiful a beautiful day out there this morning. Had a nice little run on the beach before I started this. Canada, Jennifer, sounds good. George is in Canada, Dean, all clear. Excellent, good stuff. Okay, now I just wanna get a feel for who is online with me today. So can I ask you to just let me know what type of building work you're primarily focused on? Is it new homes, renovations, commercial, or maybe something else? Or even if you're not a builder, just type in the chat box and let me know what industry you're in now we do have a, a couple of uh, uh, special guests with us uh, today from master builders in the hia in australia also from the nahb in the us so welcome to you guys as well and uh, to assist assist me today i have peter from our marketing department who's going to be answering any questions you might have in the in the chat box so if you do have a question please feel free to just type it in and peter will do her best to answer it for you and if not she'll try and flag it for my attention so that i can i can address it okay great now i can see the uh, the results of the poll and we do have 90 percent uh 90 builders so the marketing obviously worked now I do have another question for you. I want to make sure that I'm covering the most applicable strategies for your building company. So can you let me know how many projects you do a year? Just select the option that relates to how many projects you expect to start this year. And that's going to enable me just to make sure that I'm tailoring this presentation to be most relevant to your building company. So, uh, so go ahead and excellent. Cool. So we're predominantly in the four to 12 bracket uh, today. That's uh, perfect, spot on. And, uh, and just one final question. Can you let me know what size jobs you're targeting? I mean, some guys are focused on volume. They tend to target a lower contract value in order to keep the jobs simpler. Whereas other guys might be doing some more complex builds, which then has a, an impact on how the building company is structured because obviously custom homes require a lot more problem solving throughout the build process. So guys, your time is valuable and I want to make sure that you get maximum value out of the next 45 minutes or so. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Perfect. Great. Now from what you guys have shared with me, I think it's going to be a real eye opener. So let's press ahead and get started. Now, I'm guessing for a lot of you, this is probably not the first presentation that you've attended regarding how to get more leads for your building company. So the first thing that I do want to mention is that if you have ever tried to generate sales in the past by advertising your building company and it hasn't worked out, then it's really not your fault. Because the problem is, the people out there that claim to be marketing experts. But those people who are running marketing agencies and promoting their services to you have never managed to generate sales for a residential building company through paid advertising. Now, they sell you on the dream of what they can deliver based on what they've achieved in other industries, such as e-commerce. But the reality is, 
the sales process for a residential building company is is not like any other industry, which means you need a different process in order to make paid advertising work. Now, the other problem is the sales process for a building company is extraordinarily long compared to anything else that these guys would have ever succeeded at previously, which means by the time you realize that their advertising campaigns are not working, then you've already burnt through thousands of dollars. Now, the end result, you end up frustrated, angry, and cynical, and ultimately you resolve to stop wasting your time, money, and energy on paid advertising, and instead you go back to focusing on referrals. I mean, who's ever had that uh, situation? Type in the chat box and let me know if you've if you've been through that uh, scenario where you've tried to advertise, it hasn't worked out, and you've gone back to referrals, but. The problem is you can't grow a building company by relying on referrals. And if the source of your referrals dries up for any reason in the future, then the destiny of your building company is out of your control, which is why every building company needs to build a marketing funnel so that they can take control of their own destiny and protect themselves from future events. Now, before we start, it's really important to just take a moment and just get yourself prepared. Turn your mobile to silent, turn off notifications on your computer, close your door, and even put a do not disturb note on it. And I want you to pull out a pen and a pad and just get ready to take notes because we're going to be moving fast in order to get through everything. And I just don't want you guys to, to miss out because in this presentation, I'm going to reveal the secrets for getting clients to chase you. Now, some builders believe leads that are generated from paid advertising are a waste of time. They say they're completely cold compared to the inquiries that I normally get. Now, they say things like uh, they don't reply to emails and they never answer their phone. And in their mind, these inquiries are a waste of time and they're better off sticking to dealing with their normal inquiries, which come through as referrals. And to be honest, part of what they say is completely true. The leads that you will generate from paid advertising are colder than leads that are being referred to you. Of course they are. I mean, what do you expect? Do you respond to an advert and talk to the person answering the phone like a long lost friend? I mean, of course you don't. The fact is, you have to work harder at building rapport when you start dealing with colder inquiries, which means for a lot of builders, they have to learn new skills. The days of being able to just grunt at consumers and still win jobs, those days are long gone, thankfully. And of course, those consumers, they don't respond to emails or call you back because no one has recommended you at this point. You're still, in their eyes, just another builder, which means there's work to be done. And that work is called marketing. So if you find yourself in a situation where you are generating leads, but you're unable to progress those leads to the next stage in your sales process, it's not the advertising that's failing, it's your marketing. Now, most builders, they fix the wrong problem. They stop advertising when what they really need to be doing is improving their marketing. Now, marketing agencies are of no use to builders that don't have a marketing message to amplify. If your message is not already attracting your ideal clients who are then progressing through to contracts, then why would you spend money amplifying that current message? And uh, another thing to bear in mind, your current message did not attract the referrals you're getting. Those referrals were generated because of the relationship the prospect has with the referrer, not you. And what they've done is they've saved precious time and energy by shortcutting or at least reducing the research stage of their buying decision by relying on what we call social proof. So before you scale up your advertising, you need to develop a marketing strategy that works. And that is why we're here today. I know you want to get more leads for your building company and you want to do it without filling up your database with time wasters. The fact is the new marketing process for builders is the key 
to get in more quality leads for your building company, which is why I'm gonna take you through the key elements of that process in this presentation. Now, my goal for this presentation is to help two types of residential home builders. For those of you who wanna get more leads for your building company, I'm gonna take you through the new marketing process for builders, which will show you how to get clients to chase you. And for those of you who already have enough leads coming in, but you find yourself dealing with the wrong type of people, I'm gonna show you how to appeal to your ideal client while repelling those maybe not so ideal people who maybe they just don't have the right type of projects or maybe they're, they're just price checkers that waste your time or maybe they've got a, a really poor attitude. Fact is, the only way you can grow a building company safely and securely is by increasing your profit margins. And the only way to increase your profit margins is by generating more demand for your services than you can supply. And when you do that, you become overbooked, which is the key to running a successful professional building company. Now, at this point, you may or you certainly should be thinking, well, who's this guy to tell me what to do in my building company? So very, very briefly, I started working with builders back in 2011 as an online provider of workplace health and safety documentation of all things. And at the time, my daughter, Sky Stevens, she was studying marketing at university. However, she'd become a little bored with what was being taught and was keen to, to just get out and get started in the real world. So together, we decided to set up Acris Services, which was a marketing agency for residential home builders. Now, long story short, things went well and the business grew. However, we noticed that for a lot of builders, although they, we were generating plenty of good opportunities for them, they weren't closing as many of those opportunities into sales as they should have been, which is why we decided to expand into sales training. And in 2014, we launched Acris sales training. Now things went phenomenally well and it grew really, really quickly. However, the closer we worked with these builders, helping them with generating leads and then progressing those leads into contracts, the more we realized that these builders were not making the kind of money they deserve to be earning given the amount of hours that they were putting in and also the risks that they were taking. So it became clear that they also needed help with increasing their margins and systemizing their building companies. So in 2014, we launched the Association of Professional Builders, which is a business coaching company dedicated to helping residential home builders to generate more leads, more sales, and increase their margins while improving the building experience for their clients. And thanks to our founding members, builders like Toby and Elizabeth Searle from High Water Homes in New South Wales and Wayne White from Constructive Homes in Queensland, the Association of Professional Builders now coaches more than 244 residential building companies in five countries, making it the largest coaching company for custom home builders in the world. Now, I don't say that to brag, but I simply wanna give you context for the information that I'm about to share with you. So on that note, let me share something with you. At four o'clock in the morning on Thursday, the 13th of January, 2011, the floodwaters in Brisbane peaked at 4.46 meters, washing away roads, homes, and destroying businesses, including my own. Now, at that time, I needed a new challenge. And while there were plenty of things that I could have done, most of my ideas centered around helping custom home builders with different aspects of their business. Because I had 30 years experience dealing with high revenue, low margin businesses, which relied heavily on systems and processes in order just to be profitable. Now, these were skills that I knew I could bring to the table and transform a lot of businesses that were missing out on a great opportunity to make a lot more money from the services that they were providing and while at the same time in improving the building experience for their clients. The challenge, however, was one that is faced by every entrepreneur that starts a brand new business. I had a proven track record having grown my first business to over $35 million in revenue and employing 50 staff before selling the company. But 
how would I get in front of my target audience and demonstrate how I could help them to grow their building companies safely and securely. Now, what I'd like to say is that I executed a well thought out marketing strategy from day one, but the truth is I stumbled across the answer quite by chance because the week after the floods, the Master Builders Association in Queensland, Australia, kindly published a list of all their members along with email addresses on the web. Um, and that was to help consumers with finding builders to rebuild their properties. Now, knowing what I know now, I would not do this again. And I wouldn't recommend anyone else does this because apart from anything else, it's now illegal. However, what I did in 2011 was send an email to each of those builders containing some tips about how best to market their building company during that time. And I followed up the following week with some more tips on qualifying those inquiries that were coming through. And then I followed up the week after with some tips on how to structure and present a contract proposal in order to maximize their chances of winning a job. Now I carried on doing this for seven weeks. I shared information on pricing, reading construction financials, the notorious and very misunderstood calculation that is work in progress. Um, I, I sent tips on employing and managing staff. In fact, anything that I felt was appropriate and useful to the owner of a residential building company. Now, sure, some builders unsubscribed. Others, they asked why I was sharing all this information without charging. But I just carried on. And what I was doing, I just carried on building goodwill without asking for anything in return. And then on Monday, the 21st of March, 2011, the phone rang. Now it was a builder in North Brisbane and he said, I need help. He said, I've been getting your emails for a while now. And I wondered, can you help me with uh, putting a contract proposal together? And that was it. A new company was born and I never looked back from that point on. Now, what I'd stumbled across was email marketing, which was a relatively new concept back in 2011. And I realized that by simply providing useful information to builders, I could build trust. I could demonstrate expertise and show them how I could help them by simply helping them. And that got me thinking, if this works for me, I wonder if it would also work for builders. And of course, there's only one way to find out, build it, and they will come. So we jumped in with both feet and we built a marketing system for builders that not only automated the entire process of sending out emails to their prospects, it also contained all of the information emails that they needed in order to demonstrate authority and position themselves as experts in the industry, as well as building rapport with their prospects. Now, that system was called Keep In Touch for Builders. And it's now used by residential home builders all over the world to generate quality leads and then nurture those leads into opportunities before advancing them into high margin contracts. Even today, nearly 10 years later, builders are still only just discovering the full power of email marketing. But we didn't stop there. Once we discovered the power of marketing and how using the right marketing could not only generate more leads for builders, but it would generate more of the right type of leads, the leads that wanted to that uh, that they wanted to deal with. Now, we dug deeper and we went on a journey to see how we could make this marketing process even better. And now I want to share with you what we learned on that journey and. It doesn't matter if you're building in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, or the USA, nor does it matter if you're in a metro area or in a rural area, because this information has been tested by residential home builders in all of these countries operating in very different niches. And none of this is theory. These are all strategies that we have helped custom home builders apply to their own building company. Builders like Glenn uh, Venstra from Pine Creek Homes in Canada. Glenn recently shared his story with other members of the APB and said that as a result of following these strategies that I'm about to share with you, their leads actually increased during the recent downturn. So the three secrets that I'm going to take you through today are 
the number one thing governments around the world value more than gold and how builders can take advantage. Also, how a baseball game in New York gave birth to interruption marketing and my personal favorite, how much you should spend on advertising your building company. Now, I love this topic because there is so much misinformation out there which is just beyond ridiculous. So do not miss that one. It's something every residential home builder needs to know. Now, some custom home builders might be thinking, everyone already has access to all of the information that they need online. So why would they be interested in what I've got to say? Well, let me share a quick story with you. Recently at home, we've been watching the Spanish TV series Money Heist on Netflix. Anyway, in the second series, there's this team of thieves that take over the Spanish Reserve Bank and their plan is to steal the gold that is stored in a secure vault below the building. Now, as part of the bank's security measures, as soon as anyone attempts to break into the vault, the chamber fills up with water. Therefore, these thieves conjured up a plan that enables them to extract the gold from a flooded vault. However, it's not just the gold that they're interested in. On the far side of the vault, behind a plain wall, lies a second vault. And the question is, what on earth could be more valuable to a nation than its entire gold reserves? And the answer is its secrets. Now, this is something that marketers have been claiming for a long time now, that information is more valuable than gold. And just ask Cambridge Analytica, the company behind the Facebook privacy scandal in 2018. They've been using information to decide elections all over the world for years. Now, sure, we all know that each lead in our CRM system has an arbitrary value. After all, those leads, they cost money to acquire and a certain percentage of them do turn into sales. Therefore, it makes perfect sense to allocate a dollar value to each lead. And of course, the more information that you have on a lead, the more qualified they become and therefore the closer they get to becoming a client, which means the more, the more valuable a lead is, the more, well, the more information you have on a lead, the more valuable they will become. Now, does that make sense, guys? Just type in the uh, in the chat box and let me know. Is is this all making sense? The more information you can gather on the lead, you actually increase the value of those leads in your database. Absolutely, Jennifer, thank you so much. Zoe, knowledge and the data is more valuable than gold, absolutely. Yeah, Alex, makes sense. Good stuff, guys, cool. However, that is still not the real value. I mean, qualified leads, they are valuable, but more valuable than gold, probably not. The, the real intangible value lies in a building company's secrets. Now, not its dirty little secrets that it's trying to conceal from the tax man, it's industry knowledge. That's the real gold. The problem is you can't really sell it, can you? I mean, consumers, they will happily give you a few hundred thousand dollars for a collection of materials, just so long as you assemble all those materials on site. But they're, they're unlikely uh, to pay you to tell them everything you know about the industry and even if they did it's not really scalable however those secrets that you take for granted and just store in your head and then freely give away in the form of advice to prospective clients during your one-on-one -on -one chats those can be traded rather than sold they can be exchanged for the number one thing every building company needs to survive attention by sharing your knowledge, your experience, and your advice, you'll get the attention of your target market. And attention leads to interest. And interest generates leads for your building company. And when you use video to share your knowledge, it's leverage, which is how you scale. And of course, scaling means more sales. So take a moment to think. What does your marketplace need to know? What are the most frequently asked questions that you or your team are being 
ask because when you answer those questions and make the information available to your ideal client in the form of videos, they will be worth their weight in gold because you will transform your building company from being a commodity to becoming a professional service. And that's the secret of how to avoid competing on price. If you're pricing plans and then submitting a price to the prospect, how are they going to choose a builder? It's going to be on price, isn't it? However, when you go on camera and share your knowledge with that same client over a period of time, do you think they will only consider price when making a decision on which builder to choose? I mean, think about it. Would you? I mean, of course you wouldn't. Because apart from anything else, you would have been educated on what would be a terrible idea for someone looking to build a new home. Now, here's the thing. Consumers are not stupid. They just don't know what they don't know. And more importantly, they don't know what you know. So help them out. Stop selling and start helping. Now, one builder who is a member of the Association of Professional Builders, he did this in April with a brand new content video that he shot on his iPhone. And by May, he had signed up two preliminary building agreements that were generated from brand new leads in his CRM that had never heard of him before they saw those videos. So in summary, he spent $1,200 running a marketing campaign that produced $750,000 in sales within 30 days. Now, that is an incredible return on investment. And it just shows how powerful this strategy is. Traditional advertising is dead. So do not waste your money. Information marketing and advertising is where it's at. And right now, video is the method of delivery. Now, Rocky Simmons from Vision Homes in the USA implemented the new marketing process for builders after relying on face-to-face -face meetings and phone calls. And by his own admission, it certainly was an adjustment. However, what's interesting here is not just the fact that Rocky started to see fast results, which improved the whole morale of his team. It's the fact that he says, and I quote, fortunately, the APB found me. Now, Here's the thing. We didn't find Rocky. He found us because we use the exact same strategy that we teach builders in order to build our membership clients. So that is the number one thing governments around the world value more than gold and also how you can take advantage of it. So guys, do you see how this can help you to not only avoid competing on price against other builders, but to also actually increase your margins. Just uh, let me know, is this making sense? Type in the chat box and, and let me know, guys. And, and do you see how valuable the knowledge that you have acquired as a builder over the years really is? And do you see how you can trade that knowledge for attention? Because attention is the number one thing that you are trying to achieve with your marketing. So it's important to maximize your assets, your strengths, and then use them to your advantage. So type in the chat box, guys, and uh, let me know if you're going to start sharing your knowledge and experience in your marketing in the future. And let me know if you're already doing just that. Let me know how it's worked out for you so far. Thank you, guys. Uh, Alex also helps with SEO rankings when uh, when you answer FAQs. Absolutely, yes, um, yeah, we're um, we're keeping a close eye on that. We've uh, we've always had like good SEO strategies, and they generate a good amount of leads. But we've never gone out of our way to deliberately produce content just for SEO. But um, we're getting to that point now where we're starting to see not just with us but with our clients as well the the benefit of that because the leads are just such high quality excellent uh okay so we've got antonio thank you uh ike how do you deliver these videos with online marketing or after getting a uh, a content okay yes through online marketing so there's a number of ways that you would deliver them facebook is probably the the number one weapon of choice at the moment because you can get uh, if you produce the video that's about 7 minutes 
everyone will tell you that you shouldn't be posting long videos on Facebook, but we use a strategy where we get 95% views on a seven minute video for less than 10 cents. And if you think about that, someone sits there and watches your video and it's costing you 10 cents and you can scale that. That is the cheapest marketing that you can get. Getting someone's attention for that long, just phenomenally cheap. Cool. I mean, I just redesigned my website now. I'm planning a marketing campaign. Good stuff. Excellent stuff, guys. Okay, so a lot of custom home builders think I'm honest. I do great work. And when I get in front of people, they choose me. The problem that I have is that I'm not getting in front of enough of the right people. Now, if that sounds like you, let me share a quick story with you. Back in 1886, the Yellow Pages was launched, and it was awesome. Consumers could easily find suppliers that provided exactly what they needed to buy. And for builders, it was a great opportunity because they were able to put their building company in front of people who were looking to build. However, there was a flaw, and that was that builders were having to compete against every other building company that was also listed in the Yellow Pages. Now, sure. They could spend some money and take out an advert to increase their presence, but the people that saw the ad were searching for builders and they were most likely gonna reach out to more than one company. But then in 1927, television was born. And just 15 years later, on the 1st of July, 1942, the first ever TV commercial went out. Now, around this time, there were now over 4,000 TV sets in New York alone. And on that day, while well, everyone with a TV and an interest in baseball gathered to sit down and watch a game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Philadelphia Phillies, NBC interrupted the program to show the first ever TV commercial. Now, the advert, which only lasted nine seconds, featured a map of America and also a watch. And at the end of the ad, a voiceover announced, America runs on below the time. Now, in that moment, interruption marketing was born. The people that had tuned in to watch the baseball game that day, they were not searching for a new watch. However, the commercial planted a seed in their minds. Now, they didn't need a watch, but they wanted it. Now, these days, interruption marketing is all around us. Facebook. Instagram, Google display ads, and yet a lot of building companies are still relying on a strategy that dominated a hundred years ago, search. Now, they're not advertising in the yellow pages anymore, but they are pinning all of their hopes on a Google search, whether that be from a search engine optimization strategy or a Google ad campaign, which means they are invisible to the marketplace until it's too late because by the time a consumer searches for a builder, they already have their plans and now they're simply looking for the lowest price. So how about that? You spend all your profits advertising to people who then expect you to spend your evenings and weekends quoting their jobs for free so that they can choose the builder with the lowest price. In other words, the builder who's made the biggest mistake in their quote, but think about it. What if you'd have gotten in front of those prospects earlier in the, in the process before they even realized that they needed to speak with a builder? Now, you'd be the only builder speaking to them at that point, and then you'd be able to explain the importance of being involved in the design process in order to keep the project on budget and as the project progresses through the design process with you being the client's trusted advisor, you're on hand to suggest modifications to the drawings, uh, negating the need for expensive, unnecessary structural components, which means that trust is formed because expertise is demonstrated and rapport is built during the process. And what do you think happens when the final construction drawings are completed and ready for pricing? Do you think the consumer still goes searching for five other builders to put a price on their job so that they can choose the lowest one? Now, 
If you've never used this process before in your own building company, then you'd be forgiven for thinking that they would. But the fact is, they don't. And why would they once the builder is someone that they already know, like, and trust? And that is why the most successful builders use interruption marketing because margins are directly linked to marketing. So if you are not hitting the industry benchmark for gross profit, then it's probably down to your marketing and your advertising. Now, a lot of builders that I speak to, they tell me that they don't need to advertise because they get plenty of referrals. In fact, they treat it as a badge of honor. They say, my building company is so great. We don't advertise, our clients just come to us. And that sounds great in theory, but when we start digging into the facts, it's obvious what's happening because if those builders didn't need to advertise, then the money they were saving on advertising and marketing, that should theoretically flow right down to the bottom line, which means they would have above average net profits. But that is not what happens. Instead, those builders that brag about not having to advertise always have net and, and gross profit margins below the industry benchmark, which means they are not saving money by not advertising. Instead, not advertising is actually costing them money. It's supply and demand again. If you don't have enough demand for your supply, then prices drop, which means your margins drop. And when demand exceeds supply, then prices rise. And of course, your margins rise. So Whenever I hear a builder saying that they don't need to advertise, I already know that their margins are below average. Maybe they don't want to grow. Maybe they don't like earning too much money because as one builder told me years ago, it just means I'll have to pay more tax. Well, if you're like me, then you're happy to pay more tax because it means there's a bigger share left for you at the end. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't chase referrals. Referrals are great and they have a higher conversion rate when compared to cold traffic. But if you don't increase your demand through paid advertising, you'll find it tough to increase your margins to a level that allows you to scale up your building company safely and securely because margins are linked to mar uh, marketing. Now, Campbell Matson from Location Homes in New Zealand is the latest example of what is possible if you are open-minded enough to try? Now, I need your feedback, guys, in the chat box. Is this all making sense? Can you guys see how the marketing process for builders has changed over the years? Let me know in the chat box. And do you also see why it's no longer possible to sit back and wait for a consumer to find you in the yellow pages and then call you? and why you need to interrupt what they are doing in order to get in front of them. So let me know who is currently using interruption strategies to generate leads. Good stuff, Michael, totally. Greg, makes sense. Antonio, thank you. Uh, Peter is flagging something. George is asking what the benchmark profit margin is. Okay, if you are building new homes, George, the benchmark is 33.3% markup, which is a 25% margin. So very important not to get those terms confused. We often talk in terms of margin being 25% for new homes. Um, some people misinterpret that as a 25% markup, which will only return you 20%. So new homes, 33.3% is the benchmark. Um, if you're doing renovations, it's even higher. The benchmark for renovations is a 35% margin, which is about a 52, 53% markup. Now, if those, if those margins seem extraordinarily high to you and you don't believe you'd be able to get them in your area because you've been charging a lot lower, the truth is you probably won't um, be able to achieve that straight away um, because you haven't got your marketing firing. When you have a marketing system in place that's generating more leads than you need, you'll not only hit those industry benchmarks, you'll exceed them. And we've, we've done this numerous times um, with, our, with our members. So it's, uh, we have all the data on this. This isn't theory. Um, we see all the, the, the KPIs for our builders. Thank you. Yeah, 
no worries, George. Glad to glad to be helped. What are you doing, George? Out of interest, is it renovations or is it uh, is it new homes? Uh, and I mean, I'm spending hours every day studying about the strategy. Fantastic, good stuff. Uh, Look, it's something we've been considering. What I need is an automated way to do it. Absolutely, you've, you've got to automate and systemize uh, everything. You can't be doing this stuff one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, George, timber framing for new homes and additions. Okay, you're gonna be on the higher end of the scale there. Cool. Okay, this is really important because this number is the holy grail of business. And when you crack this code, there is no limit to the size you can grow a building company to. So how much do you spend on advertising your building company? Just type in the chat box and let me know. Um, and also let me know, is it a dollar figure that you work on or is it a percentage? You know, and if it's a, a percentage, uh, and we're talking a percentage of revenue here, is it 3%? Type in, let me know guys, maybe it's more, but most likely it's gonna be less. Now, after talking to a lot of owners of small custom home building companies, it seems with many of them who are doing 3 million a year or less on sales, that it's almost considered a badge of honor to spend under $10,000 a year on advertising. In some cases, nothing at all, and unfortunately, Many of the building companies that haven't been investing in their marketing or regularly spending money on advertising are now hurting badly. The word, of, the word of mouth and referral leads that they've always relied on to get them through the year, they've dried up and their sales pipeline has slowed considerably with timelines also blowing out substantially. Now, there are really two big problems that emerge as a consequence of this way of thinking. If you haven't budgeted for advertising, then you're either gonna end up spending that money somewhere that you shouldn't, or you are not going to be charging the margins that you need to be charging in order to grow your building company safely and securely. So let me give you some context. Let's assume the industry benchmark for net profit for custom home builders is 10% of their revenue. Let's also assume that the industry standard for advertising, not including marketing costs for those custom home builders, is 4%. But you've only budgeted 1%. Now, in theory, you should be able to achieve a 13% net profit now because the savings you made on marketing will drop straight through to your bottom line. However, that never happens in business because the investment that you make in advertising is what generates the demand for your services, which first of all, allows you to hit your revenue target, which maintains your total fixed expenses below the 15% benchmark. And secondly, the demand you are generating allows you to command the industry standard benchmark for gross profit, which like I said, is 25% margin. And that obviously is not to be confused with markup, which equates to 33.3%. Now, for those of you that are not investing three, four, or even 5% of your revenue into advertising your building company, you probably just fell off your chair laughing at the thought of marking up a, a $750,000 job at 33%. I mean, who does that in this industry? Well, I'll tell you who's doing it right now. It's the builders that are making annual sales of six, 10 or $20 million a year plus. They, those are the guys that are doing it. And that means they are producing net profits of 600,000 to $2 million a year on top of their market salary, which is substantial. Now, a lot of builders that haven't reached those heights, they've no idea that those margins are even possible. However, like I said, we've seen the evidence. So I can tell you that that is what you need to be working towards. Now, if you don't have a website with a clear, unique selling proposition or a blog with over 20 informative articles or an email strategy that keeps your brand top of mind 
or a Facebook strategy that builds awareness or a Google's a Google ad strategy that attracts the active buyers. If you don't have those things, then no, you are not suddenly going to be able to go from a 20% markup that probably produces 1% of true net profit a year to a 33% markup that produces double digit net profit. Because unfortunately, there is no silver bullet. It does take a lot of hard work. And that is a good thing because that is the very thing that separates the top 4% of residential home builders from the chase impact who are all competing on price. So step one, get very clear on your point of difference and make that your own unique selling proposition. Develop your marketing messages, update your website to include all of the fundamentals that need to be included on a website. Create a blog that's stacked with interesting and useful information and build out a follow-up email strategy that runs continually to every single lead you've ever had that hasn't been disqualified and amplify your content on Facebook and generate hot, educated leads by using Google Ads because those Google ads will retarget the people that have already visited your website and blog. Now, a lot of builders believe that advertising and marketing is an expense. And like I mentioned before, they believe that by reducing their expenses, they have increased their profits, but it really doesn't work out like that. At worst, advertising is a cost of sale because the more you spend, the more revenue you generate. So rather than being a direct expense, it's actually a direct cost, which is just like the uh, the cost of materials to build a home. The more you spend on materials, the more houses you can build. Now, I know that's probably a little bit simplistic, but you get the point, right, guys? Just type in the chat box and, and let me know, is this, is this making sense? Now, the really successful builders, the ones that have scaled their building companies to $10 million and beyond, profitably, of course, they don't look at advertising as an expense or even as a cost of sale. Because for those guys, advertising is an investment. It's an investment in margins. You see, when we look at the data across many building companies in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the US, one thing stands out above everything else. The more a building company spends on marketing and advertising, the higher their margins, and not just gross margins either, net margins, which means even though they're investing more money than their competition, they are still managing to generate higher net margins because marketing is an investment in margins. Now, it takes some builders years to learn that, but when they do, they start to make real money from their building company. Now, take Veronica, for instance. She recently shared with our members that the most recent jobs for a building company had come from social media marketing, which led to winning two fabulous jobs within three months. So what do you think Veronica meant by fabulous. Now, that was increased margins. That's a 25% markup that they've added. So they've still got a little bit further to go with those margins, but that is a lot better than they were previously achieving. So that is how much you should spend on advertising your building company. Do you see how this can help you to maintain a steady flow of leads without having to resort to lowering your price just to win jobs. Type in the chat box, guys, and, and let me let me know. And give it a try and see for yourself just how powerful this is when you're scaling up your building company. Uh, I think this takes things I've observed and clarifies it. Luke, good stuff, Luke. Uh, Jennifer, it's, yep, smart marketing. Antonio, yes, good stuff, guys. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to, to join me today.
I know you're all exceptionally busy, so I really do uh, appreciate it. Okay, guys, so let me ask you, if you were able to use your knowledge and experience to provide value to your prospects using the strategy that I outlined in Secret One, and then you are able to get the attention of your ideal clients and attract them towards you, like I mentioned in Secret Two, and then you are able to use paid advertising to scale your building company using the strategy that I spoke about in Secret Three. Do you think you'd be in a position to get more leads for your building company without filling up your database with time wasters? Just please, guys, just type in the chat box and let me know. And also, let me know, did this presentation give you the answers you were looking for when you signed up? I need to know if I've delivered on my promise to you guys. And also, just go ahead and tell me, what was the, the number one thing that you got out of this presentation just type it in the chat box what is the the first thing that you are now going to learn more about in order to implement into your building company i mean just go ahead guys i'd love to hear what you got out of our time together and uh, and what you more importantly what you're going to do next because remember to be more successful you don't always need to build more homes because by increasing demand and becoming overbooked you can increase your margins and make more money while staying the same size. Excellent, thanks guys, that's fantastic. We've got a lot of, a lot of action takers here. Um, let's see what we've got. Absolutely, I didn't. Uh, okay, so George is gonna spend more money on marketing. Good on you, George. Greg's gonna be creating more Ken, uh, content. MJ, interruption marketing is what I'll focus on. Fantastic, MJ. Eric, advertising is really a direct cost. That makes so much sense. Fantastic. Thanks, Eric. Luke, I think I have a new strategy. Email. Email is gold. Uh, Ike, videos work in advertising. They sure do. Michael, number one strategic marketing plan. Great place to start. Alex is going to make, be making solid videos that answer clients' FAQs and establish credibility. Antonio, you're going to increase my business if applied. It sure will. Uh, I absolutely guarantee it, uh, Antonio, because we've been doing this a long time, and uh, it's just a proven system. That all it is. Uh, Renee is going to redesign the website and add marketing to it. Um, uh, Jennifer, thankful you gave honest information. It's been my gut feeling about yeah. This is the thing, isn't it, Jennifer? A lot of the time we can just hear stuff that just confirms what we already know. But when we, we hear that, and more importantly, we see that other builders have implemented this and it's worked, it gives us the confidence to just march forward and do the work and, and implement. All the time, we think it's right, but we're just kind of holding back. It kind of it, it, it eats away at our energy and just stops us achieving. So I'm so glad that's helped you out uh, there, Jennifer. Uh, Luke, uh, our website request uh, provide much contact info for email. Um, I know I'm heading in the right direction. Fantastic. Already implemented a lot. Online marketing is a challenge. It sure is, Chris. Uh, I mean, good information. Slide dive. Uh, to solidify the path I'm heading towards. Fantastic. Antonio, tomorrow, a new day to renew business with smart marketing. Fantastic stuff, guys. And for those of you on this presentation who are not currently members of the Association of Professional Builders, just let me ask you a question. How many of you are serious about implementing a marketing system into your building company? And how many of you are keen to get started, but you don't have the tools that you need right now? Now, hearing about all these new strategies and tactics that you need to be implementing, it can be a little overwhelming when you hear them for the first time in a condensed format like this. However, there's no need for you to try and figure out everything yourself on your own because all of the tools that you need to generate more leads, more sales, and increase your margins are available for you to download right now when you join the Association of Professional Builders. So if you are interested in finding out exactly what you get as a member of the APB, then today is a good day to join because we have put something special to offer those of you on this presentation right now. So is it okay with you if I spend the next 10 minutes taking you through what we've 
put together. Let me know in the chat box while I just grab a quick drink of water. Michael, thank you. Oh, great. Greg, Rene, Jennifer, Chris, Antonio, definitely. Okay, fantastic, guys. That's awesome. And 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 look, guys, for those of you that uh, maybe not sure, it's fine if you don't want to follow this advice. We're happy to share what's working for other residential building companies just like yours. But if you would rather go it alone, then that is okay as well. So just let me know in the chat box if you'd if you'd like to see not only what you get as a member of the APB, but also I can show you how it's helped other residential home builders just like you. Zoe, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, now we're going to stop broadcasting live on Facebook now because this offer is only for those of you that have registered for this presentation. So if you are on Facebook, then to continue watching and see the offer, you'll have to jump on the link and actually uh, join this presentation because, uh, yeah, we are about to stop broadcasting. Okay. Have you ever felt alone in your building company or that you should be earning more money from the amount of hours that you've put in to running your building company or even that you'd like to get better organized so that you could provide an even better service to your clients now this is something we hear all the time from custom home builders